the first comic coming to the stage, uh, this is the third or fourth time I've seen him. I've seen him at the shuffle at some other shows. He's very funny. You're going to love him. Please put your hands together for John Summers! Did I let out with the crowd or what? You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. This is fun energy. Now, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help it over here. Um, I was just right there. Um, that you guys were placing all the bets about me. And uh, frankly, I'm surprised you had to place a bet, but it's true. I'm in the military. And I have been. I've um, been in the military for 22 years now. Kid, I was, I mean, to say it was aimless is just giving me too much direction. I just had no idea where I was supposed to go or what I was supposed to do. And my dad was a little concerned for his son that would spend his Sunday afternoons making honey nut muffins with mom and decoupaging his light switch covers. And I was like, oh, I don't know, there's going to be a, quite a bright future for my kid. So God bless him, he pulled me into the garage and he tried to teach me to do whatever it was he was doing to the car. And, um, and I, my job was like to, to hold the, the flashlight for him, but like any little boy, you know, I'm easily distracted, so he'll turn around and find me in the driveway going, Wonder Woman! <laughs> <laughs> and then he had got all these like complicated terms for everyday items. Um, like the, the thing that you use to open up the paint can is like a, a screwdriver, or um, the thing you do to, you know, shape your eyebrows is like pliers, or I call them tweezers, I don't know, it's very confusing, the whole thing was just too much. So, we finally had that father-son moment where he saw no hope, so, came to my room, and I was 17, he says, so son, what are your intentions after high school? I paused my video game and I looked down and was like, oh, I thought so. So just sign here, initial there, and you'll be leaving on the 25th of June. You see, my father was my re recruiter. <laughs> he was an uh, Air Force recruiter for 23 years, so yeah. There was no hope. I was definitely going. He was going to pawn me off into the government. So I was like, all right, old man, whatever. I saw this coming. I'll play your little game. But we both know there is no way in hell the military's going to be taking this. Because not now. Obviously, they take me now. Uh, <laughs> then, I hadn't quite hit my growth spurt yet, so um, I was only 5'2", and not the towering 5'4", that you see before you today. So you can imagine when I step off the bus for basic training, there was this, um, I gotta get this right, uh, she's a, um, a female military training instructor. I just call them lesbians. <laughs> 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 Step-up thing, and she the bus, and she comes. She takes her sights off of that victim, and she puts them on me, and she comes running over with her like bi-level little affair haircut and puppy chow breath, and she's like right down in my face, and she's like, "Are you lost, little girl?" Like, this bitch right here, and then it turns out, no, she really thought I was a lost little girl. And looking back, who can blame her? Well, the other job that I'm sure you have me pay for is, you know, is uh, I was a cabana boy for a number of years at, yes, at Merv Griffin's Resort Hotel in Palm Springs, California. And it just doesn't get any more titanically gay. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you tried. <laughs> so I worked right next to this Adonis, uh, the straight, gorgeous, guy named Clint, because of course his name would be fucking Clint, he has a cabana boy in Palm Springs, why wouldn't it be? And um, at the time I was, I was positive, I was 21, I was, no one knew I was gay. Um, well I did, I felt like it was in the closet, I just didn't know it was made of glass, so everyone could see me like arranging my shoes in there, and coordinating my items, like, the whole time. So I was wrestling with those issues of coming out and, uh, you know, I wasn't the pretty one, so I had to sit in the back, so uh, Clint went around and roped up the drinks, and then my job was to pour those drinks. Well, it's 128 fucking degrees in the shade, so I'm like, all right, so I'll pour a margarita for our guests, and two shots of Patron for me, and then, you know, pour a little daiquiri, and 
I don't know how to tie. I always want to try them. And so by the time my shift ended, I was completely shit-faced hammered. And um, I couldn't drive back, so I thought, oh, I came up with a brilliant idea. I'll cover someone's in-room dining shift, because no one fucking calls in-room dining when they're out on vacation. So perfect. Go to work in-room dining, and you can see where this is going, because yes, the phone rings. And I look like Rudy Giuliani on CNN. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, well, and I'm like trying to crawl out of my hangover, and they're like, we need help, you need to turn on the shower. I'm like, what? This is in-room dining. You need to just go. Well, it was the front desk, they, they were busy, or something. I don't know, I barely paid attention to my job. I'm not gonna pay attention to my job. So I'm like, oh, all right, I need to turn on the shower in the grand suite? And I'm like, yes, all right. So I grabbed the tweezers, and the little thing you used to open up the paint cans, and then I just figured I might need those. And then I um, I put on the tray, and to catch a predator was really big back then, so I knew not to show up to a stranger's house without a pitcher of iced tea, so I put some iced tea on there, and I ran over to the Grand Suite, and I was super, super, super excited to go into the Grand Suite, because I've never seen it, and I've heard it's just gorgeous. So I walk in, and you guys, it was absolutely awful. It was horrible. It was the worst thing to happen to decorating since athletes started making millions of dollars. <laughs> Whoa! I've seen porn sets with better decor. So I'm standing around going, this is it. And then I say, hello, I'm, I'm here to fix the shower. Which, coincidentally enough, is lying in the porno. <laughs> so I put one little foot on the grand sweeping staircase. And like those velociraptors from Jurassic Park, they came at me from behind, they come at me from the sides. They've got their clipboards and their little Madonna headsets, and they're they're all like busy and thin, and they're following behind me. And I'm just like, what's going on? And then it's, you know, because I'm not terribly bright, so it wasn't until I was like three fourths of the way up the stairs, and I'm like, wait, none of you people know how to turn on a fucking shower? And then I saw it, and I totally understood. First of all, it's a gay man's dream. It's uh, got granite. It's got it's got concrete, it's got chrome, it's built for 12, and it has things just shooting out from underneath. It was just, but I understood the complexity of it because there was this like, now this is 2000, so, you know, technology, this is just being invented. And there was this hieroglyphic um, Egyptian pad looking thing that, that coordinated all this, and I'm busy trying to like make it work, and now it's looking like a Disneyland water show going on in the, in the shower. And I hear this woman's voice as she comes into the room, and I look over, and I, I didn't see who it was, because there was this breast hanging out of the robe. <laughs> oh my god. And I was like, it was like a giant squid's eye looking at me. And I just, just like, oh <laughs> I'm what you would refer to as a platinum gay. So, um, cesarean born, never breastfed. Uh, I never even kissed a girl. I guess straighties would call me like a psychotic or whatever. But <laughs> so I'm emotionally scarred from the trauma of seeing giant squid's eye. So I'm immediately back at the pad, and I, I hear her say to me, I bet you thought I was a really dumb bitch that couldn't turn on her own shower. And then I said, well, you know what? I did until I saw this, and I totally understand. And then I look over. And the really dumb bitch who couldn't turn on her own shower was fucking Mariah Carey. <laughs> Which, today, we know, couldn't turn her on her own shower. <laughs> Thank you guys. You guys are